Hello, uh, this is a tutorial for getting into the uh, VJ uh, mixing software called Kogi. So I'm just going to start her up. And this is the collection of windows that sort of pops up when you first start up the program. Uh, so you get a main output. That's the one we're going to actually watch a video on where you, there's a preview if you need it I'm gonna just minimize that for now you can minimize any of the windows with the little triangles uh, and this is sort of a uh, for controlling what the what output you're looking at and I'm gonna minimize that as well up here pretty self-explanatory this is our kind of master um, clock I guess our master tempo I'm gonna lower this I'm gonna just go to uh, so we can kind of see what's happening a little more uh, and then we've got some sort of statistics and information on uh, resources being used so the master mixer uh, there's a couple of things we, we need to do before we can uh, actually use this the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a clip synth okay the clip synth is like your um, the, the banks of media clips that you're going to want to uh, play back okay so I'm going to open up some QuickTime movies um, we're going to really it's very easy you can just drag and drop your movies into place you can drag, drag them one at a time or you can a bunch of them in there and they'll just sort of fill it out there's 16 slots per clip synth so we got a whole bunch of clips here but if I do this nothing comes out our main output is still blank basically that's because we have to add a player to every clip synth okay so I'm gonna right mouse click and find ourselves a player uh, you can start with some of the simpler ones. I'm going to use the Super Player. And that's got some some options with it. As soon as we turn it on, we should be able to see. We can see some stuff happening there. We can choose various clips. All of these have been edited before and some of them are really short, some of them are longer. Uh, we can do stuff like change the speed. So this is this would be four times slower. We can go four times faster. Sixteen, oops, sixteen times faster, or normal speed. Uh, forward or backwards. So we could just choose it's like a switch, either be forward or backwards. And then there's this kind of random start on the beat. So every time you can see that it's uh, doing stuff on the beat. Um, okay, so we have, you can see down here there's one clip synth, and we have basically one clip playing at a time. What's the next thing we can do? Okay, it's uh, we want to add an effect chain. Okay, now this is where you would be able to start playing with the images a little more fun um, so there's all these effects here let's choose let's choose bad TV uh, so it has all these parameters in it it has an on off button it has a delete button if we want to get rid of it and it has a way of changing its position in the chain I'll show you that in a second uh, but before, as you can see, if I turn it on, nothing's happening. That's because we got to turn on the the chain up here, and we got to turn it on to the chain that we want to use. Right now, we only have one chain, so that's the default right now. So, but if I turn this button on and this button on, immediately I get some action. And you can see you could change things. Um, All of all the fun aspects of of a bad TV filter. We can make that a little kind of minor. Just 
distortion, lots of distortion. Okay, so these sliders are obviously very manual. You can just hit them with the mouse and and play around with them. You can also uh, you can also turn on our MIDI map, very similar to Ableton or Modulate. You can turn on your MIDI map. It highlights everything you can control with the MIDI uh, a MIDI interface plugged in. I've got my Korg Nano uh, Nano control. Basically, I'm just going to highlight the slider I want to control. Just move the slider on the, the Korg Nano slightly, and it it registers and it. So there's five sliders in a row. And now I can use my Nano control to control the. Now I only have ten fingers, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, I can't do everything. So, uh, the other uh, option is for us to kind of automate this stuff. And the way it works is, uh, I'm going to use, I'm just going to go down to these two options first. These are kind of the mathematical functions that you probably have seen in uh, um, audio synthesis, I guess. Um, so we, we can add, like I say, a sine wave square wave, triangle, sawtooth stuff, some randomization, some other sort of uh, uh, mathematical progression. And uh, they also have these, uh, for instance, uh, saw up two, saw up four, saw up eight, etc., uh, which are different speeds. So eight would be uh, eight times slower. So um, you choose one of those, and it changes the button on the side. And if you uh, click on it, you uh, you're turning on the automation. So it's it's uh, doing this kind of neat warpy thing. Um, there's a whole bunch of other ones. Obviously, we could try cubic. It's a bit different. We can do more than one. So we can do. Um, remember, you if you choose them, you also have to turn them on. It doesn't turn them on automatically. So we can turn them on. We can like do all of this. You could do you could do them all, or you could leave one. Say to you can have one on manual one down there at the bottom. So that's pretty. That's pretty crazy. Uh, we can have an, another um, uh, filter. Um, let's see. Uh, like, let's do something simple. We'll do a fisheye. And uh, this fisheye, you can see, is just kind of blur um, warps it, gives it a kind of a weird TV tube effect. Uh, if we use these arrows, we can change the image before it goes to the other filter. It's not too apparent, but it's kind of blurring it out. Give it a fish eye and the bad TV. Um, you can see fish eye doesn't have any other parameters. It's just an on-off thing. Uh, and this, uh, uh, speaking of control on-off, uh, we have the option to edit our key map as well. So we could, for instance, add uh, a keystroke command to the uh, fisheye, like, for instance, the Z key. We could use the Z to, er to uh, turn it on and off. Or uh, we, uh, what I always do is I add keystrokes to all of the clips so I can change them on the fly. So now I can just change them with the keys. Do, 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 do. Okay, so so we've got uh, we've got some distortion going on, some clips. Uh, but maybe we want to instead of using keys to change things, maybe we want to automate that too. So what we can do is bring up a sequencer. 
So we bring up the sequencer. I always like drag it a bit smaller so that I can line line up the triggers with the media slots. And as you can see, there's one trigger for each media slot. So this is kind of like a step sequencer, and we can use it to um, to uh, sequence through or change the uh, um, when the clips play back. It's pretty easy to use. All you have to do is choose the clips you want. So say this one here, and then this one here, and then maybe this colorful kind of one there. And then you got to make sure your start button's on. You got to make sure your sequencer is on. And then you got to drive it. So right now it's just manual. So if I drag this around, it's going to change the. Hey, let me let me. Uh, just turn off the effect chain. Oh, I can turn it off here. Or I can turn it off here by turning these off individually. It's probably easier to turn it off up there. So we'll leave that as is. We can just kinda once we've kind of got this this effect chain the way we want it, we can actually just we can save it. And we can call that fisheye uh Bad TV. <laughs> that's, that's a bit literal, but anyway, and we can kind of forget about it over here. Um, and uh, but right now we want to see this the sequencer work. So we got sequencer on. The driver, as you can see, needs to be um, controlled. Something here's one you can use. It's easy. It's the simplest one. It's it's basically just goes by the BPM goes through. You can kind of see there's a kind of equal amount of space between each one of these roughly. So it's kind of a regular kind of thing. Um, we can if we add more clips it's gonna get a little more dense. Okay, um, if we added another clip synth, we can have, we could do uh, an overlay. So, let's bring in some other uh, clips here. Uh, what do we got? And we need, obviously, we always need a player. Another super player. Okay, so you can see down here we've got two clips since right now it's one or the other. So this one doesn't have a sequencer on it, obviously. So we're just just choosing clips. Um, but we want to mix them, okay? And so that if you right-click on here, you get a whole bunch of other uh, toys to play with. Uh, we could use a 2x2, two two, which is going to give us um, divided up. And you can use this layout mode to kind of change the order of things. That's kind of cool because you can you can uh, assign a MIDI control. So I'll just assign one of my sliders so I can like do some nice s sequencing in a way manual sequencing. We can also automate it. Turn it on. Okay. Um, we can also do a uh, Luma key. So we can turn our 2x2 two two off and we can do Luma. And in this case it would be um, you got to get the right order, whatever order you want. So we've got the um, we've got clip synth synth one on top of clip synth two, and it's keying out the dark. I can just sort of you kind of see if I say if I turned off the sequencer, you can see we've got we've got that clip, and then on 
the top of it is uh, this clip or that clip or that clip. So there's lots of stuff you can do. Ah, we've got, oh, well, I see, we're, we're keying out the dark. So if we swap channels, now we're keying the dark out of the, the man. So it doesn't, the threshold doesn't really, it's not much there, but um, that's basically the dark is gone. Uh, and then the softness is just, you know, it softens the edges a bit. Uh, swap channels is kind of nice because you can kind of play with things. We turn our sequencer back on, see what happens. Play with this. Lots of fun. Um, that's pretty much it for now. Um, one other thing that I would just mention is uh, Siphon. So Siphon is a sort of open source way of, uh, I guess it's kind of like a protocol or something that lets uh, different pieces of software transfer media back and forth. And the, the best thing I've found about Siphon and uh, the ability for Kogi to use it is to record what you're doing, which is always fun. So the Siphon Recorder is a separate piece of software, but it's free, and uh, you can uh, choose the source. Uh, I always choose the master mix, so I get I get whatever I'm mixing. Uh, if you go up to the uh, preferences, you can just take a quick look. You can choose the, uh, the compression, uh, the compressor. You can choose the frame rate, size, all that stuff. Audio is kind of limited, but that's cool. And um, it's just really easy, and it doesn't seem to slow down the computer much. So you have to hit record, and, s and you can just start playing with stuff. Uh, just doing whatever. Whatever. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and it hopefully demystified the uh, uh, this quite excellent piece of software just a little bit thanks for watching